Hey guys, in this video we're talking about how to make $1,000 per week doing auto detailing and really deep diving into specific strategies on how that is possible. And these are strategies that are tried and true and proven over time. I've done them myself as well as taught many other guys how to do this and they have far exceeded those kind of numbers. So we're going to be doing this on a G37X Infinity. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, guys, so contrary to what I put out really most of the time, this is not a maintenance client. This is actually a friend of mine. I really don't detail for new clients very much these days. I stick to my kind of exclusive group of maintenance clients, and outside of that, I really try to keep it very, very slim and thin as far as the new people I'm detailing for. But this client, uh, you guys can see the before here. This is a friend of a friend of mine, so kind of like a mutual, fr I, I know him through a, through a mutual friend and as you guys are looking at the before I want to give you a little bit of context of the two main things we're going to talk about here number one we're going to talk about basically how to get customers I call it a self-filling funnel and I go way deep in my online course about this and so I'm gonna to touch this at kind of a surface level and a 30,000 foot view but the second thing I want to talk about is focus and why it plays such an integral role seems very simple but plays such an integral role in a detail level like this. The very first thing I'm doing here is very simply removing all of the contents from the interior that was not removed by my client himself. There was not a bunch of stuff in this car, just like your classic stuff, umbrella, you know, all that, you know, maybe like a map in the back or something like that. But the first thing I want to talk about here is the nature of the interior of this vehicle. This is a sedan sized infinity. It's a few years old and it's not in super bad condition whatsoever. However, there are areas of vehicles that no matter who drives it or how often they drive it, that specific area of that vehicle is going to be dirty, especially if the vehicle is not detailed regularly. Now, this is something I kind of want to break down so you guys understand it in a little bit greater detail. While this car is super clean, in my opinion, there are very specific areas that are extremely dirty because this is kind of one of those situations where the car is driven on a daily basis, but my customer keeps it very clean, not that they detail tell it on a regular basis or even clean it on a regular basis, but they just probably don't eat or drink very often or bring much things or many things into the car itself. So the carpets are in great condition, the door panels, the dashboard, all of these things are in great condition, but there's some key areas. Number one, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is full of that caked on kind of makeup dirt is what I would kind of describe it as. Many times this happens in women's cars when they have makeup on their hands on the shifter or on the steering wheel or on each, you know, on the blinker or what, wherever, you know, kind of around the steering wheel, you get that makeup caked up on the steering wheel or on those places and it ends up being kind of like this chalky buildup. This is going to be an area where I really have to pay attention. The other area is going to be the leather seats. The leather seats over time, no matter how clean the customer is, end up getting kind of that shiny sheen on them and that is, again, from body oils. So the main kind of dirt that I'm dealing with in this vehicle is just the body oils from people who ride in the car and drive in the car, but I'm not dealing with food crumbs or anything like that. So carpets, fantastic condition. General areas of the interior, door panels, console, dashboard, fantastic condition. Carpets, fantastic condition. But again, I'm, I'm focusing on very, very key areas. Now, why is that so important? Well, it's pretty simple, really. And I'm going to get into the business portion of this in just a second, but I really want to cover this topic in a little bit more detail before we get into that. And I also want to explain to you guys the products and tools that I'm using in this video, at least at a surface level. So I will get into the business stuff in just a second. But the reason why this focus is so important is because I've gotten the opportunity to train a lot of different detailers uh, in the past few years. And one of the fastest and most, one of the fastest ways to know profitability and a really frustrating detailing business and also one of the most common things that I keep seeing it just becomes this pattern I see it uh, with almost with a large majority of guys that I train is they say to me something along the lines it sounds like this Luke I don't I know that I'm shooting myself in the foot but I don't know how to not be 
OCD on the areas that I know in my head don't need a ton of my attention, but I end up focusing a ton of my attention in that area. Like it's hard for me to get myself to stop. This is something that has become so common at this point that I hear from people and something that I experienced in my own life that I've got to talk about it because this is the difference between what I call, like I say in a lot of videos, the detailing ego and then running a profitable business and being successful in auto detailing. Probably the number one thing that is going to catch many of you as you're starting your auto detailing businesses is deciding where to put your focus. And I like to think about things in like analogous terms. And so I like to think about this maybe like with, let's just think about it with money in general. A lot of times people will not prioritize, say, where their money should be going, right? So we either spend more than we earn or we put it in places that actually don't have any capacity to return money back to us. And so the question that, that you kind of ask with a budget is not only uh, where should I put my money but or, or where potentially could I put my money, but where is the most powerful place at this specific instance in my life to place money? Like where does that make the most sense? So for example, my wife and I, we invest money every month. We save money every month. We invest money back into our business every month. We put, you know, we have s certain market investments. We have certain business investments and I have certain uh, investments that I buy books with every month. So I read about a book a week. That's something that I'm pretty uncompromising on and I have a portion of my income it's just a percentage where that percentage of every dollar that I bring in goes to books uh, that I read. Now, the reason why I do that very simply is because at this point in my life, I know that that is going to be, there's going to be an exponential return in that just from a knowledge standpoint where I know I'll never get this kind of compounding effect ever again at this point in my life. This is the most effective place to put this. Now, putting this in detailing terms as you're detailing the interior of a vehicle along the same lines this is a great way to think. I want to put it in the context of this steering wheel. You guys are seeing me detail right now. Dashboard, a little dusty. Console, a little dusty. Radio, a little dusty. Door panels, a little dusty. But steering wheel, serious makeup dirt, body oil dirt, grime dirt. So what am I doing? As I go over the dashboard, as I go over the door panels, there are specific areas, of course, on every single part of the car that I focus a little bit more attention on. But what ends up happening is there's this huge temptation to hyper focus on the tiny crack or the tiny crevice or the dust that you can't even see, but you're almost dreaming up is there and adding this extra work and extra product and extra effort and energy and thought into an area where you don't need to add that thought or energy in that area. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And a lot of times what I found is people actually, or detailers in particular, they actually are just waiting for somebody to give them permission to not do that. And so listen to me, if you're listening to this video and watching this video, here I am as a detailer who at some level has experienced success in this business. You have permission not to do that. As a detailer, I'm telling you, there is a very specific strategy to this that is almost imperative to abide by in order to really build profitability and revenue in this business. I'm going to hyper-focus on the steering wheel and going into it, of course, experience builds a lot of, say, knowledge in this area. At this point in my life, I can look at a car and decide in a, a couple minutes exactly where my focus is going to need to be put. But the point is the dashboard and the door panels, just as two examples in this particular vehicle, take me two seconds to finish. They don't need to take me any longer than that. I'm not spending any more time than I need to. I'm not letting the detailer ego creep in and tell me that I need to soap up every area and agitate with a brush every area. I can very simply take a microfiber towel, go over that area very quickly, and it's going to be ready to be dressed when I dress the entire interior at the end. Another example of that is going to be the back part of the both of the leather seats, the driver side and the passenger side. The back of the leather seat doesn't bear, it doesn't get touched. My client here, he doesn't have children. He doesn't have a bunch of people he's carting around. The back of the leather seat doesn't get touched. It doesn't get dirty. I need nothing more than to wipe it down very quickly with maybe some APC on my towel. Even sometimes this is going to sound crazy, but even sometimes water itself almost feels like more than enough and proves to be more than enough in certain areas like this. So once again, 
you saw I hyper focused on the steering wheel. There was a fair amount of energy put into the steering wheel. I needed that to be the case. The same is true here where this, uh, this little pocket here in the console where the cigarette lighter sits. And the same is going to be true with the cup holders you're seeing as I'm addressing this area just around the stick. This is what needs my attention at this point. But my attention should not be put on the dashboard or the door panels or the outer part of the glove box or the, out, the, the back of the leather seats. So I am giving you permission and just saying that this is an issue that while, you know, maybe some of you don't experience this, it's, it's becoming so common that I feel like I have to address it. Learning where to put your focus is half of the battle, if not more. It's so, so incredibly important. Now, before I get to kind of the business section here, I want to explain some of the products that I'm using because I'm using a bit of, a, of, of an array of products here and some of these might be good for you, some of these might, you might not need, but I want to show you what they are nonetheless. The all-purpose cleaner that I'm using in this video is the Citrus All-Purpose Cleaner from Renegade's new Detailer Series. Now, let me tell you, and by the way, guys, if you like the information that you find in these videos, smash the like button below this video because basically it helps this video rank in the YouTube algorithm and more detailers who watch detailing videos will probably come across it. And if you feel like this information is good for you, it's probably also good for them. So if you want to return the favor for the effort that it takes to make these videos, just smash the like button if it's good information. Now, the Citrus All-Purpose Cleaner from the Renegade Detailer Series is becoming a staple. It's becoming something I keep plenty of gallons on hand uh, of, and it's something that I reach for basically by default nowadays. It's an incredible interior and exterior all-purpose cleaner. And I detailed a disgusting muddy truck with it a couple weeks ago, and I was absolutely blown away with the power of this product, but also the safety. I've used many all-purpose cleaners, many different caustic cleaners, non-caustic cleaners. I will say you're not going to get any sort of white residue with this cleaner. It's really a fantastic, fantastic product. Now... I also want to show you guys the microfiber towels that I use for the interior, basically in 100% of my videos, I get these microfiber towels from uh, Sam's Club, actually. I have a Costco and a Sam's membership, but I get my interior microfiber towels from Sam's Club. It's just their member's mark. I think that's their generic brand, and I will hook up an Amazon link to it because they're basic, I think they're the same price on Amazon as they are on uh, at the store itself, but those are the microfiber towels that I always hook up for the interior. I use different microfibers for the exterior. But for those of you wondering, because it is a very common question, I use just Sam's microfiber towels. They're really great. They've got a, they're, I think they're around three to 300 or 300 to 350 GSM and They've got a great, uh, what would I say, absorbency to them as well as uh, what I would call like that grabbiness where you it really comes in handy when you're dealing with uh, in interior car uh, panels and materials. It just cleans them very, very well. I haven't found any that I like better for the interior. Now, apart from the Citrus All-Purpose Cleaner, you guys see the detailing brushes that I'm using are the Work Stuff detailing brushes, and these are fantastic there. I get them from carsupplieswarehouse.com. Of course, I'm going to hook up links to all this stuff, um, but the, the those are the detailing brushes that I'm using just by default nowadays. They come in all different shapes and sizes, and they're just fantastic. I use the VX5000 steamer, and I'm not going to talk about this too long, but I always hook up the McCulloch steamers below because they're way less expensive. This is basically a thousand dollar steamer. And while some of you may be able to afford that, I think most of you are probably in a position to pay more like 200 to maybe $150 for a steamer. And so the McCulloch steamer is so loved by so many detailers that that is the one that I normally hook up. Now let's go ahead and get into some business stuff because I think that's probably why most of you guys are here. So here we're talking about how to make $1,000 per week doing auto detailing. Now this particular customer, this was a $215 job and I will say it was interior and exterior exterior. I will be showing the exterior in a separate video. This video is only the interior. I wanted to give you guys a very detailed look at what this was like because truth be told, it's not very often that I detail for new customers nowadays. Now this was a $215 job. 
This took around, say, three and a half hours, about three hours, 45 minutes. Actually, let's just say four hours because it takes a little bit longer when I'm videoing and I'm having to move the camera around. Uh, about four hours, and so let's see, 215, let's just say $200. You're talking about a little over $50 an hour. So a little over $50 an hour is the kind of math that this works out to. This was one single job, $215. Now let's just just for, you know, kicks and giggles, say that this happens five days a week. I've built a great marketing funnel. Monday through Friday, I work, I detail one vehicle a day, minimum or average around $200. That alone is talking about $1,000 a week doing auto detailing. $200 a day, Monday through Friday, one single vehicle working around four hours. You're talking about $50 an hour. And again, the math works out to $1,000 a week, taking weekends off and only doing one vehicle a day. Now, I understand that some people are kind of cynical when they hear things like this because maybe the way you grew up or maybe the kind of things you, know, you experienced or maybe you've tried doing auto detailing and it just didn't work. But I will say it almost blows my mind nowadays when I get some of the cynicism and skepticism that I get just because it's almost, and, and I don't mean to sound arrogant with this, but I, the amount of people that I'm having to turn away when it comes to detailing is blowing my mind. And so a thousand dollars a week at this point sounds dramatically more conservative uh, than the potential uh, that is there. And so I want to talk about the main problem of why people are not able to do this and the solution to that of what will bring something like this two hundred dollars a day, uh, two hundred dollars a day, Monday through Friday, a thousand dollars a week. The one thing that is going to affect this more than anything else is your marketing. And basically what I mean by that in even more simpler terms or even more simple terms is how many people can you get to contact you on a daily basis for detailing? Here is what inevitably it will end up happening. And I'm just telling you guys this from experience. And while I go into much deeper detail in the course that I'm creating and it's not out yet, but I will touch on this at, at a pretty deep level here. 25% of people who call you automatically are going to question your pricing. They're going to be frustrated at you at the fact that you're not going to lower your pricing and you will not do business with them. 25% of people are like that. It's not going to change. Uh, it just is what it is. And this is one of the big reasons why I always tell people, if you are not saying no to anyone, something is wrong with your business strategy. 25% of people will not do business with you. They're calling you to see if you will do it for pennies on the dollar. You're going to say no. You're going to give them a price. They're going to get mad at you. And you're going to say, listen, I think somebody else is best for you. 25% of people, another 25% of people are going to question it. And then they're going to say, let me go talk to my wife or my husband and I'll get back to you. And if you don't follow up with them, they will not get back with you. You will literally never hear from them again. And then about half of them, when you follow up, will consider at a pretty high level scheduling with you. Okay. That's the other 25%. Another 25% of people, you're going to tell them your price and they're going to say, you know what? That sounds great. We explain a little bit about what you do, but can I go ahead and get on the books? They're really raring to, to get something done. They're kind of urgent about it. And maybe they have something going on that night and they're hoping you can do it that day. Then the last 25% of people, and this might even be, and I'm, I'm giving you guys exact percentages. Obviously there's no way to like empirically measure this, like at, unless you really take a lot of data over time, which I haven't done. So I'm just kind of being general with it. So please don't comment and tell me that my percentages are off because obviously my percentages are off. Okay. Maybe more like seven to 12% of people, which is the last group are going to call you. Not only do they want you to detail this one time, but they also want you to, to put them on your maintenance list. They want to see you on a regular basis. Generally, those people are going to want to see you around every 30 to 60 days. That is going to be the most common time frame that you are going to experience about 30 to 60 days. Now, there are a lot of strategies to see people even more uh, frequent than that, that I'm not going to get into right now. I mean, I'm talking even on a weekly basis. I've got a boatload of clients that I, I could, uh, I have to literally say, I'm sorry, I can't take the work, but they would if they, if I could see them on a weekly basis. But that's the last group of people 
That is the type of person you want to target. But in a more 30,000 foot view sense here, the solution to the problem of Luke, I can't make a thousand dollars a week is getting customers into your funnel. And in this case, when I say funnel, what I'm, what I'm, uh, likening that to is, uh, calling you on your phone. Okay. If you get 10 calls a day from new people, inevitably you will at least schedule around say two of those people. Again, I think this is a conservative number, but I'm trying to be conservative just for the sake of not over promising things. Two out of 10 people are a shoe in to schedule a $200 mark is a very, in my opinion, a very average price when it comes to a detailing service. Like I am performing in this video, this interior exterior clean. Once again, this is only the interior. I'll show the exterior later $200, uh, for this actually 215. But when you have 10 people calling you a day, this is, uh, what I'm talking about is the solution to this. How do I make a thousand dollars per week issue? What people mean when they say, I'm, I don't know how to make a thousand dollars per week. What they're really saying, whether they, whether they know they're saying it or not is I don't know how to increase this critical mass of customers who are trying to call me. Basically all, all they're saying, if I'm not making enough money in detailing, all they're saying is I do not get enough calls which mean I in turn cannot say no to enough people and yes to the few to where the few I say yes to pile up and fill up my week. So the question becomes, how do I get more people to call me? That is the question we are asking here. And the answer that I think is the most effective is not business cards. It's not flyers. It's not knocking on doors. It's the internet. So I want to give you guys one very practical, practical piece of advice here that there's a lot more to this and the, probably a good way to look at this is a chess board. And I'm going to give you guys one or two moves here, but one or two moves is not enough to win a chess game and really learn the game over time and get really good. You got to know a lot more than that, but these one or two moves are extremely important. Number one, People always think these days, for whatever reason, you have to have this huge social media following in order to get people to be contacting you and, you know, get a bunch of business. This is not true. Let's take Facebook business pages. For example, you have a personal business page or you have a personal page and a Facebook business page. Here is a practical tip that you can implement today in order to get more calls to your phone through social media so that you can start saying yes to the few and no to the many. This is the best way I think there is to build an auto detailing business. Say yes to the few and no to the many. Number one, a Facebook business page. Most people already have one. If you don't, it's very simple to set up. Let's say that my, uh, auto detailing business is called, uh, awesome auto detailing. I set up my Facebook business page. I tell them where I'm located and all that good stuff. Facebook inevitably or organically will push out whatever I post first to my local area. Okay. This is just the way the platform is designed. Alrighty. The more likes I can get on my posts, the more Facebook perceives this as traffic. The only way to get likes on my post is to make posts. Well, the only way to make posts is to take time to take a, a few rinky dink pictures and post them up on my page. What ends up happening is consistency is king in this area. If I take one to three pictures a day and put a thoughtful caption underneath them and post them to my Facebook page for the next 90 to 100 days. That's like a little over it's three to like three and a half months. And I know some of you guys are thinking, well, Luke, that's too long. Well, it's like this, we're building a business here. And so this, nothing happens overnight. We have to have, we have to have enough of a time frame to be able to measure analytics with some sort of accuracy. Same thing. Statistically, you don't take, you don't take a, a statistical sample of five people. You take it of 500 people because you don't want a sampling bias. You need, you need a, a critical mass of enough of something to measure. So the next 90 to let's say 120 days, you post one to three times daily, every single day. Even if the interaction on your business page is extremely low, 
you will inevitably be pushed out to your local area simply because you are consistently posting and nothing more. Facebook will favor your pictures or whatever because you are doing, you're becoming so consistent. So one post over 10 days is better than 10 posts in one day. Now I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with anything? The point I'm making here is that this is a free platform to market on. And so while some people People are handing out flyers and business cards and all that sort of stuff, which I'm not trying to dog that, but the point is, in my opinion, the days of flyers and business cards are, are just over. It's over, it's done, it's not the most effective way. But what that is going to do over the next 90 days is it is going to give you a, a, a small group of people who inevitably call you, you inevitably say yes to, and you build up this small critical mass of, say, 15 people, 15 people over 90 days, 15 people. Once again, I think these are conservative numbers, but 15 people and you do it with excellence and you do an incredible job. And then you give yourself and your business the opportunity to tap into what inevitably is the strongest marketing tool in the auto detailing business, which is of course, word of mouth. Generally speaking, in every service business, word of mouth tends to be the, the most effective thing going on, okay? Because basically your customers are selling you to other customers. You're not having to sell yourself. That's why it becomes so effective. But the point is, you have to build up a critical mass. And so the reason I'm saying this is just because many times people say, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I think the answers are kind of right in front of us and we know what to do. We're just deciding not to. And so I'm giving you a very practical tip here. Once again, I know this is more of a chess game. There's a lot more to this, but that is one very practical tip that every single person watching this video can implement today for free that over time, over a period of time, will inevitably, inevitably build some sort of critical mass. Now, the next thing that I want you guys to do when you commit to do this and you say for a 90 day period, this is what I'm going to do. When you do that, every single solitary person that you detail for, and some of you might want to lower your prices, you know, I'm not going to go into detail about that because I just don't have time in this video, but if you decide to lower your prices a little bit to lower the barrier to the customer and you want to get more people in, okay, your funnel, your funnel right now is Facebook, you're lowering the barrier by lowering the price, lowering the barrier to your customer, all right, you've detailed their vehicle. Every single solitary person, you are not allowed to let any person slip through the crack with this strategy. The second thing I want you to do in conjunction with this first 90 day experimental period, every person you detail for must leave a short, simple, and good Facebook review. Okay. Reviews are going to be the number one catalyst in this entire equation. There's other things that are important for this equation, but these two things are extremely important that at the very least will have a huge effect and a huge, what would I say, uh, kind of be a great launch pad for you in the beginning stages here. Each person must leave you a review. It is the first thing people look at, but even more than that, in most every platform and or search engine, reviews weigh very, very heavily re with regard to your SEO or your search engine optimization, or put another way, reviews are going to be a really heavy hitter when it comes to how many people are seeing your, say, Facebook page, okay? The difference between five reviews and 35 reviews is not, uh, it's not linear, it's exponential. It's not a linear growth. It is an exponential growth. And that's what people really don't understand about this game and probably why they don't prioritize it. But not only is this consistency aspect extremely, extremely important, but the reviews will exponentially spiral traffic upwards. Now I know I'm being redundant. But these are two very practical strategies. It's not the whole picture. Once again, I don't have time to go into detail about all of the crazy stuff that you, you know, need to know how to do, but these are two very specific things that you can literally implement today on a free platform, do it for free, and you will begin to move in the right direction. The problem that I'm trying to explain that this solves is 
the biggest problem I find in guys that I train is that they do not get enough traffic in regard to customers calling them, phone calls, emails, messages, all of that sort of stuff. What that inevitably forces you to do when you're running an auto detailing business is say yes to the 90% and no to the 10%. When you say yes to the 90%, you're having to compete on price, you're having to negotiate and do a bunch of things that will not spiral your business upwards. And it's truth be told, it's just not a long-term game. But when you have an overwhelming amount of customers calling you, and when you've built what I call a self-filling funnel, a marketing machine that yes, it takes a little bit of work on the front end to put up, but then it begins to run on its own. And the way I put it is if you build a funnel, you can pretty much dump water in any direction into that funnel you want, but because of the way the funnel is built, the water is going to be directed at the end to the same location or in the same direction. So I can splash the water in, I can, I can kind of drip it in, I can pour it in, I can pour it from the back, from the front, from the side, but no matter how I pour that water, the funnel is set up to lead the water in a very specific direction. And if I could build a funnel on YouTube, I would funnel you guys all down to that like button. You guys can hit the like button and help this video go out to more detailers. Now guys, this is, I know, a long-term strategy, but that is the nature of the beast and you just don't get results overnight. And so part of this is just committing to consistency. Now, now that we've talked about this business, uh, this business strategy, if you guys are going to start implementing this, I want you to go down in the comments and just type, yes, I'm implementing it. That's it. Just say, yes, I'm implementing it. Okay. Because it'll pique the curiosity of some guys and they'll be like, wait, what are they implementing? Let's figure this out. What's the, what are they talking about in this video? And I think it will be helpful. Sometimes you just need other people who are doing the same thing as you're doing to encourage you. It's hard to stay motivated sometimes. It's hard to stay encouraged sometimes. When you have other guys doing the same thing and other detailers implementing the same stuff, man, it makes your world a lot, lot better. So go down in the comments and just say, yes, I'm implementing it. Now, as you guys can see, I'm extreme cleaning these carpets. You're going to see several different products in the rest of this video. I will, of course, link up everything in this video in the YouTube description box below so that if these products look effective to you and, and you want to check them out or buy them, of course, go mouse down to the YouTube description box, check those out. The products are probably not for everybody and everybody has their own situation, so you're just going to have to judge for yourself. But having said that, guys, I want to go ahead and let you sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of of the video, but of course, stick around to the end for the outro. And also, I apologize, I didn't get an end result video of this car. I totally forgot. So, totally suck. I'm sorry. I forgot. I will not do it again. Anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of the video. Stick around till the end. And as always, thank you guys so much for being involved.
again. It's a large thing.
All right, guys, that's it. As always, if you want to check out any of the tools or products that I used in this video, they'll all be linked up in the YouTube description box below. If you're new to the Wilson Auto Detailing channel and you haven't yet subscribed but you love everything auto detailing, hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you get notified when I publish future videos. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard, and I'll see you in the next video.